Good day. Welcome to Light and Basic, taking His glory to the ends of the world. This devotional is titled, The Evil is Not the Will of God. The Evil is Not God's Will, it's Not the Will of God. And our team scripture is taken from the Oracles of Isaiah, that is Isaiah chapter 54, verse 15. I'm reading from the KJV. God says to his prophet, Behold, they shall surely gather together. Behold. So you see, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. The wrong teaching about the sovereignty of God has led some Christians to their early grave and others in a persistent bondage. And what is that teaching about the sovereignty of God? They teach that because God is sovereign, and indeed God is sovereign, but you have to explain it in context of the word of God. When the Bible says, uh, when we say God is sovereign, what does it imply? To them, it implies that since God is sovereign, anything that happens is the will of God. So when a Christian lady is raped, they will come to her and tell her, you know everything was the will of God. God saw it coming. You see, that's how they go about things. Everything that happens in their life is the will of God. But because they say the Bible says in everything, give thanks to God. But Paul said in everything, give thanks to God. He didn't say for everything, give thanks to God. There's a difference. If I tell you in everything, give thanks to God, that means that, that all the everything came from God or came from me. He didn't say for everything give thanks to God. He said in everything give thanks to God. And in everything, whether good or bad, you have to give thanks to God. But it doesn't mean that the evil came from God. It's important you the Christian, you understand this important truth because uh, when you are set to assume something, because you see your your mind is very important your heart is very important when it comes to the, the, the springs of life the goings, the causes of life what you allow into your heart is very important so if you accept certain doctrines which is not truth but opinions of men it can give place like yesterday we were talking about not giving place to the devil it can give a spot for the devil in your life and then he the devil can come and do whatever he wants to do why are you linking that to god when you put you put that on god's charge and really it's not true so the sovereignty of god doesn't mean that Everything is the will of God. If everything is the will of God, why then will God judge men? Why will men give account for their doings and their actions and deeds and conducts in life? Why then would they give an account if everything is the will of God? There shouldn't be any judgment because everything was predestined to be the same. Be so. So it's not true. It's not true. The teaching that everything that happens or befalls a Christian was already predestined and hence is the will of God is a deceptive doctrine. The Bible indeed teaches on predestination, but it also does on free will. Therefore, it becomes important and imperative for Christians to understand what is by predestination and what is not. God says that there's predestination in our life, which is true. 
we don't assume that everything is, is predestined. thing. We have to now go to the Bible and find out, yes, God said there's predestination, but what form, what falls in the remit of predestination and what doesn't? But for you to go and assume that just because God mentioned predestination, everything that happens in your life, every nook and cranny, is in the remit of predestination. You will be doing yourself a great injustice. So Jesus said, says to the Sadducees, you err because you don't understand the scriptures. So the scriptures are very important. They are very important in our understanding. And that is why always we have to have a balanced understanding, a balanced teaching of God's dogma. God doesn't predestine people with things that just come to destroy and will not be near to their ultimate good. Such things are evil, and God won't tempt any man with evil. So James says in James chapter 1 verse 13, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. God doesn't tempt any man with evil. God doesn't tempt any man with evil. These are the very words of the apostle. So if God says to his servant that he does not tempt any man with evil, and then someone comes and teach you that that evil you are going through came from God, then you cannot blame God, because God has told you that I don't tempt man with evil. It's as simple as that. So any preacher, whether they call a bishop, it doesn't matter. When he says something different from the word of God, he is a liar. Let God be true, and every man a liar. God says, I don't tempt any man with evil. The Christian should understand that God is for him and not against him. God is for the Christian. He's on the side of you. He's for you. He's not against you. God is not against you. He is for you. You are his child. You are his daughter. He cares for you. He may permit you to fight certain battles. And the Bible indeed Say so. He may permit you to fight, fight certain battles, but it doesn't mean he brought them. You see, allowing someone to fight certain battles doesn't mean that you brought them. For instance, God allowing the Israelites to fight Goliath, and David fighting Goliath didn't mean that God brought Goliath. The Philistines were the enemies of the Israelites. They came to destroy them, but then God raised up a man called David, and David destroyed Goliath. So David had to destroy Goliath, fight that battle, to go into prominence. But it doesn't mean that it's God who brought Goliath. It doesn't mean that God brought Goliath and said, I'm sending Goliath to destroy my, my people. No. And even if such battles, those battles that he allows, he permits us to fight, such battles comes because it measures up to your good level. God permits such battles for you to fight, to be engaged in such battles because only if it measures up to your good level. See, the word of God is the wisdom of God, it's the mind of God, it's the character of God. It reveals the thinkings of God. And God says that I only permit you to fight battles when those battles measure up to your good level. When those battles measure up to your good level, that is when I will permit you or allow such battles to come to you. So when you read what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13, he says they have no temptation. See, they are certain important operative words. Says they have no temptation. No temptation. Meaning that any temptation that will come to you, all what is going to say applies to them. They have no temptation taking you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, 
who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. First Corinthians chapter ten verse thirteen. Now James also talks about a certain type of temptation or adversity where he says that God does not tempt man with evil, but he goes on to say that you are tempted when you are drawn by your own lust. There are certain adversities that will, can come to you, the Christian, because of sins. Such adversities may be beyond your faith. May be beyond your faith. And those when they come to you, not because God wanted you to fight battles and strengthen your faith, it came to you because you walk in sin, and the Bible says that sin worked death. So that one had nothing to do with God permitting anything. And that's why sometimes certain temptation or adversity may come to Christians, which is even beyond them, beyond their faith level, it was because they are walking in sin. But you, the Christian, who is not walking in sin, if you are not walking for so when a temptation and adversity come to you, the first thing you ask yourself is, I brought it. Am I walking in sin, dwelling in sin? If not, and that temptation, that adversity still came to you. It just means one thing. It means that it came to you because God observed your faith level and knew that this temptation coming, you should be able to stand against it based on the message which has come to you and what you have heard over the years. That's what God is saying. The temptation that he, he himself will allow and permit to come to you. It is because your faith was, is able to bear them. But then he lets you know that when it comes to Satan and his evils, they shall surely get gathered together. They shall surely gather together but not by me, said the Lord. So if whosoever shall gather together against thee, shall fall for thy sake. What is God saying? He's saying that the same way the evil day shall surely come for the nation of Israel. For when Isaiah, God said this primarily through Isaiah, it was about the end times. It was about the nation of Israel. It applies to you also the Christian. Because you have become the righteousness of God. And God helps you to understand that. The evil people, your enemies, they will surely gather. They will surely gather. They will, will surely gather. Meaning that the evil day will surely come. And that's when Ephesians chapter says, Paul talked about the evil day for the Christians. This evil day comes to every Christian. So the evil day will surely come. It will surely come. And God is saying that they shall surely gather. The enemy shall surely gather. The fact that you are a Christian does not mean that they will not plan evil against you. So he didn't say the enemies won't gather. They shall surely gather. But God says, see, I am not on their side. Don't accept anyone or accept any message that comes purporting that God is part of that evil. God says, I am not on their side. I am not on their side. Yes, I see them gathering against you, but I'm not with them. I am not on their side. I am on your side, say the Lord. He says, He's rather on your side. That's why he goes on to say, hence, they will fall. They shall surely fall for thy sake. When you understand this as a Christian, that God is on your side, and God is not part of the evil, that evil agenda against you, it props you up, it spurs you on to fight the good fight of faith. Knowing that 
the evil is not God's will. God bless you.